I'm honored uh, at this time to introduce Representative Darrell Issa. He's the ranking Republican member of the House Committee on Oversight and Government Reform. Representative Issa is serving his fifth term in Congress and represents the Northern San Diego area. Representative Issa served in the U.S. Army, attaining the rank of Captain and founded an automotive security company. NAPIS has worked with Representative Issa during his congressional career and looks forward to working with him as the top Republican on the Government Reform Committee. I should add that Representative Issa is a co-sponsor of H.R. 22. Postmasters, please give a warm welcome to Representative Darrell Issa. Problems 
on a two-year cycle and bring you back again and again. That's the wrong message to send to a permanent constitutional responsibility of our government. Now I want to talk about premium conversion. I've supported trying to get that made permanent, or get that uh, instituted for the previous two Congresses. This year is a great, great time, both in the House and the Senate, to say, how can you tell me you can't afford it? And I'll just give you two quick examples. First of all, we put $300 million into golf carts in the stimulus package. Now, the golf carts are important, but are they more important than people's health care? Name a Republican or a Democrat that will answer yes to that. That's one reason. The second reason is, in fact, you are a big part of the solution for health care. You're self-reliant. You've earned over a career. I'm talking to oh, sort of past, past you to retirees as much, but you've earned over a career a substantial ability to, uh, to take care of yourself, and you've earned a prepaid pension system. Why in the world wouldn't we want to support that by allowing you to not pay taxes, while others, no different than you, are allowed to use a prepaid system. It's that simple, it's fairness. And it's fairness for people who are, one, not the super rich. Now this administration has decided to make more than $250,000 during your working career or in retirement, you're inherently undertaxed. How many in this room expect to retire to make over $250,000? Please raise your hand. <laughs> Okay, how many would hope to make over $250,000? <laughs> okay, then your hopes will be taxable, but your predictions will not. <laughs> and that's the way you really have to look at it. You're the exact target that members of Congress talk about when we talk about health care working. It's, it's essential that we do that. Now lastly, I will tell you that we are in an incredibly difficult time from a standpoint of the economy. But as we come out of that time, we need to have an efficient system working for postal delivery. I'm counting on all of you. I came here today because those two issues are, are certainly on the tips of your, your tongues and they're, they're something that we hope to get accomplished in this Congress. But long after this Congress, four years, six years, eight years from now, at least most of you are still going to be saying, okay, we have a declining core business. We have a population which is both concentrated and deconcentrated, and we have to serve them and serve them well. We have a tradition of six-day delivery, but more important, we have a, a, a system of special delivery. We have a system of international commerce support. We have a system that the rest of the world, to a great extent, has modeled their systems after, or at least the smarter ones. How do we take it to that next step? So one thing that I'm hoping all of you will do on a completely bipartisan basis with Chairman Towns, myself, Dean Lynch, uh, Jason Chaffetz, who is young enough that he'll be here long after I'm gone to go do this job, uh, is we need to talk about where we go next. We need to look and say, maybe the postal system will be half the size in 30 years. But will it deliver the core services that are so essential? And will it do it efficiently? You know, a lot of people just want to say, well, let's just privatize it, or let's just get rid of it, or, you know, let's cut down the service, or the internet will replace it. Every one of you know the characteristic <coughs> of the things you do. I, I receive emails that try to have hearts and flowers and make me feel good on my birthday. It ain't the same. So I hope that the two issues we talked about today, the four or five, six members of Congress who uh, very unusually trekked down here because we wanted to let you know that one, it's our job to, uh, to care about the future of the postal system, and two, it's one of our passions, that you'll look at us as a resource. Give us your ideas. Do not assume 
that either you union leadership or leadership assigned all the way through our bureaucratic system will get the right message to us. Take it on yourself to assume that you can send us a paper letter and we will read it. If I receive a letter from any of you, one, you will receive a response. And two, I will personally see it. And I will see it for a reason. You're part of the decision process of where a system goes that has served us for over 200 years and which we will need for as long as all of us in this room will live. Thank you.